In the case of nuclear or radiological fallout, people living around potential targets such as military bases and chemical plants may be advised to evacuate. Once upon a time, the U.S. and Russia were fighting a silent war of spying on each other and trying to collect more information than the Chinese government, who steals all of your information through TikTok. Unfortunately, no social credits will be given to you, I'm afraid. At the height of the Cold War, tensions between the former Red Army and the Red, White, and Blue Army were at an all-time high. But in all that hippie boomer excitement, the US was dropping more nukes in its own backyard than on enemy soil. But those weren't just any nukes. They didn't just drop them all willy-nilly for no reason. You know, they just don't give those things out for free anymore. Unless you got some oil that needs liberating. Since the dawn of nuclear proliferation and the improper use of boom boom rockets, the US government had to come up with a catchy name for accidentally blowing up cows in a cornfield. They sat down, had a talk, and came up with the term broken arrows, which according to recent estimates are as high as 32 nuclear weapon accidents since 1950. And of them 32, six of them have never been recovered. But another term that they came up with has even more dire consequences, one that would keep even the most gray-haired of white guy up at night. A nuke flash occurs when an accidental or unauthorized deviation of a flight path over enemy territory or an accidental detonation that could lead to an all-out war. The year is 1962. The US places an embargo on Cuba, Bob Dylan releases his debut album, Bob Dylan, and Walmart just opened its first store in Rogers, Arkansas. But bubbling just under the surface of the American psyche was the up-and-coming crisis in Cuba, aka the Cuban Missile Crisis. But far away from those sandy beaches of the archipelagos, on a cold October night, a secret mission involving a U-2 spy plane is headed to the North Pole from Alaska. Relying only on the stars above to navigate, pilot Charles Maltzby suddenly finds himself flying blind due to the pesky northern lights blocking his view of the Big Dipper. Because of this, he flies straight into Soviet airspace. A pair of Russian MiGs were immediately scrambled to intercept, and not to be outdone, the Air Force then dispatched two F-102s armed with nuclear-tipped missiles to guide the lost plane back to safety, just minutes before all hell broke loose. Back in those sandy archipelagos off the coast of Cuba, things were getting dicey there as well. The computer glitch on board a Soviet submarine had naval officers and a captain convinced that World War III was happening on the surface. Either drunk on potato vodka or they were also using the stars to navigate, they too ventured into enemy territory. Back on the surface, either drunk on Schlitz or they were using the stars to navigate, someone noticed something in the water. It happened to be the lost Soviet submarine which they then promptly started firing depth charges at in order to make the vessel surface. This made the captain of the sub very angry, so he ordered the men to load nuclear-tipped torpedoes and wait for further instructions. The thing is that in order to fire that nuke, they needed the authorization of three men. But one of them, an officer by the name of Vasily Arkhipov, believed that it was a glitch on the computer and convinced the captain to stand down so they could get their orders from Moscow narrowly avoiding World War III for the second time that day. It would be the next day after these two incidents that JFK and Nikita Khrushchev would end the Cuban Missile Crisis, which just goes to show you that a good GPS back then could have avoided these situations, and a calm, level-headed approach to most things can get you out of some sketchy scenarios. And there you have it, two incidents on the same day that could have ended the world many times over makes the Cuban Missile Crisis look like a minor disagreement in comparison. Thank you for watching. Please nuke that like button, subscribe to End Nuclear Proliferation, and share the video with survivors if it's the future and you didn't hit the subscribe button. Goodbye for now, and uh...